Hello, my name is Luis Algueiro. I am a PhD student at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. In today's lab exercise, we will cover the introduction of the tensors and in the using the PyTorch library in a Google Lab environment. Present. This is the Google Colab environment. It's a really to use, really easy to use uh, environment uh, that will provide us a virtual uh, instance of, uh, of uh, in a Google uh, in a Google cloud computing engine. So here we see that it provides us uh, 12 gigabyte of RAM and more or less like uh, 70, 80 gigabyte of RAM. It's a, it's a working environment that you can use. It's just like a, a Jupyter notebook environment with the possibility to use uh, hardware acceleration like GPUs and GPUs for uh, making more fast the algorithm in deep learning. Uh, we can also uh, save a copy in a Google Drive, in our Google Drive, or also uh, we can uh, save a copy in our GitHub account. It's a really, really useful uh, tool that we are nice. So it's free to use. It's a free, you can use with a free uh, Google account. Today we will see uh, the world of tensors and the differential, differential computing in using PyTorch and how to operate with them with typical uh, deep learning operations. What is a tensor? Tensor is a n dimensional, it's a generalization of n-dimensional array of numbers. Here we see a scalar, a single number, a vector, which is a array of number, a collection of numbers. And a matrix is a two-dimensional array. And the n-dimensional, you can see that's all it's over three and more, right? So we can see that, uh, um, yeah, Tensor one in a, in advance. Here we see a Python code using the NumPy uh, package. You get you know that NumPy is a worldwide um, known is as a scientific computing uh, package for using Python. And PyTorch it's a uh, is a deep learning framework. It was designed to be an enhancement of uh, of the NumPy with the possibility of uh, using hardware selectors like GPUs and TPUs. And as many other, as any other deep learning framework, uh, its main uh, core, its main data structure is the tensor. We will start by loading the packages, you can see here in NumPy. And PyTorch, it's simple to import, like uh, import torch, right? Start. And we also initialize uh, random seats here. And let's create our first uh, first tensor. Like we can see here the torch that if we press the torch that we can explore in Google Colab all the possibilities of the functions that's available for us when we uh, load a library. You can see here there are a lot of them. So we will explore the empty function. And if we open the parentheses, we can also uh, use the help, the documentation help, that show us the, all the input arguments that are available for this function. If we um, set the uh, shape of this tensor, we can see here, if we print, uh, we can see all that the tensors is already located in memory, but it's not properly initialized. We can see here that's all rubbish, all random values that are taken from the, the exact position of uh, that memory. So we need to initialize the tensors first. There are a lot of possibilities uh, in PyTorch, like uh, tensor dot once, right? And we can see that once return a tensor filled with a scalar value of one. 
and with the shape defined by user. So we can define as well as the shape here. And let's print again the A. We can print by using the Python print uh, function. Let's see now that the beginning was just random values. And now for the same tensor, it's all a uh, fill weight one. We can also fill with, uh, let's see here, uh, we initialize with another function like zeros. The same, well, let's start. We change a little bit the shape, right? So now it's a different tensor, the same tensor, but it's a different shape, right? But now it's initialized by uh, with that zeros, with all zeros, right? We can explore the shape here by using the dot shape attributes or another, another useful another possibility is to use uh, the dot size with the parentheses. You can see that, that now this tensor has three by four, three rows and four columns. It's a two dimensional tensor. Right? So there are a lot of possibilities. We can also we can also take the shape of uh, different tensor like the ones like function, and in this occasion it will return a tensor filled with the scalar of one, but taking into account the input, the input here it, it should be a tensor, and it will take the shape of that input. So here, how it's work. So right now. It's three by four, and we can change it a little bit here. Let's press here, like, like tensor B. So we will initialize A again, like the shape of tensor B. Right. Need to print A again. And also, print the shape. Just to see. So now A is a tensor ones with the shape, oops, with the shape of three by four, right? So you can use there are a lot of also this available for for use the torch that zeros like so it's the same the same. So now it will initialize with zeros so instead of one. So a lot of possibilities. You can also take the another another function like run so in this occasion it will return a tensor filled with random values taken from a uniform distribution from a range zero to one so we can see here that if we initialize uh, with these random values it will return as a tensor with this with this shape and with samples of from a or a uniform distribution. You can also take uh, the torch that runs like, right? Like we see here, and initialize with the shape of B. And now A, it will have the shape of B as we request. So there are a lot other type of uh, options like uh, run normal right run integers so run normal it will return a tensor with random samples from a normal distribution like with the normal the, the normal distribution like Gaussian distribution also is known that it has a shape a mean equal to zero and a variance equal to one so it's also called as a standard distribution right? so it's, See how it works. The same, the same way. We can print here, okay? And we also see that negative float numbers are available for this case. So there are a lot of functions. We have over here that the random n, run n from the Gaussian distribution from normal and random just random. And in this occasion is uniform distribution one zeros so there are a lot of possibilities so you should explore uh, a little bit more with the pytorch library and then also in the documentation for the first exercise let's create a tensor z 
with each values will come from a Gaussian distribution. So let's uh, run normal, right? With this shape, one and ten. Just uh, easy to start. Uh, let's uh, let's see a little bit more with the shape. Let's check the way. Yeah, it's already initialized as a random values. Oh, let's print a little bit here, like. Uh, the value itself, yeah, it's okay. Well, there are a lot of float numbers taken from this uh, with this shape, right? Let's check the mean. Oops, the mean. And also, you should take into account like uh, some some attributes it uh, required to uh, to have the parentheses at the end of the function. Same for standard deviation and let's see what's what we got whoa well uh, the first mean it's zero dot uh, zero point thirty two and the standard deviation is zero point ninety nine well let's see here well yeah yeah it's, it happened because we have only have ten uh, values but if we increase a little bit more here the yeah thousand by a thousand all right yeah we are we are, approach, we are approaching to the mean like zero and the standard deviation of one but there are you should you know that you see that um uh, the operation this operation returns a tensor as well so how we can recover the python number from this tensor like every tensor you should Use the mm -hmm. you should use the dot item item uh, attribute to recover the value from a tensor. We return here, it will print the scalar value. Okay, so this is our first exercise, so it's really easy to start to warm up. Okay, let's continue. To the data type. The data type are really important. You know that for every uh, for every variable in Python and in every programming language, there are a lot of uh, varieties. For for example, int, integer, float, double, etc. Charge. They are also available. <laughs> in it's important to define the precision of the values and also the amount of memory required to store the variable. So in PyTorch, we can see, well, let's define again. Uh, let's select a random number from, uh, let's, let's once, right? Uh, the tree, and we can explore the A dot B type. Here, we are requesting the data type from this value. And if we didn't, specify explicitly the data type from each tensor it will create a tensor with flow 32 so it means that and uh, we can see here that the amount of uh, element size element size also available so it will recover here we we'll printed here the amount of memory in bytes for a, each element in this tensor Where he we see that each element of the tensor it's a flow thirty two, and it's occupying occupying uh four bytes and uh, also well, thirty two bits and four bytes for each element. So if for this case, and we can also get for each element the number of elements, we will get the total amount of memory that it's occupying by this tensor. So this tensor, it's uh, occupying uh, 24 bytes. So you should keep in mind that uh, you can cast, you can use, you can explore the, uh, let's see, the documentation and, okay, yeah, we have a way to initialize properly with the different type of 
data type. So we can just by checking here, torch dot flow and close. We can see that we are available the float like I use uh, 32 and 16 and also 64 are available. Let's see with 16. So it's a half precision. And by this half precision, by 16 is half precision. It's only used in two bytes per element. And now it's the, uh, the, the total amount of memory, it's only 12 bytes. So you, there are a lot of. Uh, yeah, or they or there are other also uh, you can cast like uh, to find uh, other entry like torch that um let's see oh a we will take the same value from a and we can cast to an integer so you can cast like an integer using long right so long, it will take a, a tensor and it will, yeah, we can, it will cast by the data type. It will cast these values to now, all the, the values of B are now cast to a uh, integer 64. So, B. And after and before it was cast, we can print. You can see that now it are all integers for the value p. And if we if we express this is explicitly at the moment of the definition of this tensor, uh, we we did type a keyword. You see that in the any moment that you printed this tensor, like here, it will print also the data that you've uh, defined by the user. So it's not printed here because it wasn't defined by user. So we take from the other tensor and it was cast to along um, integer 64 uh, type of. So there are also other ways to initialize, like, uh, let's see, uh, to initialize directly torch that uh, short, short tensor, right? In this case, we will take uh, the shape and let's print it here. So in this occasion, it will print some random values from uh, with the shape the, of the, Two by three, and all are in the integer sixteen. Now so we initialize also. You are initializing directly, like the long tensor, and the arguments could be two by three. Again, and now we are requesting to initialize with long values so the precision is totally different uh, you increase the precision of the uh, representation of these values right so you can also see explore that there are also ways to initialize for float values like half right? like uh, short no short half uh, double yeah also work and you see that the amount of representation for half is just float 16 and for float is for a bigger right bigger numbers or a much smaller number so it's all depends the all depends of the uh, the type of operations right the network operations and the upu operations so you have to keep in mind that depending on the type of applications like embeddings uh, it's more suitable to use in integer 16 or, or if you if you want uh, less precision but you want faster applications you should be used a flow 16 and so 
it's, been, it's, been, it's up to you. You should check the uh, documentations here in the link, and you can explore all the data types that are available. At the beginning, we said that uh, PyTorch it's like an enhancement of NumPy package, and so and like a, it's as you already uh, notice, all the synthesis like uh, defining tensors, the type of uh, the type of elements are really really like shape right like, like the attribute dot shape. It's really similar to use like in NumPy. So it's, is with uh, the the bonding with with the, these two libraries is really easy and really smooth. So like here, like define the tensor from a NumPy array. So we can uh, define an array as the argument here, right here. Oh, and let's see. Oops, are forgot to mention that. Okay, and then also green edge shape. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, the brackets here. Okay, so we initialize a tensor from our NumPy array. And this NumPy array are uh, one dimensional with three, three elements. So you can see that now we've printed a tensor with the same elements and the same shape, one, one dimensional with three elements. But one, I forgot to. to that a way to initialize uh, properly a tensor uh, with specific values. It's like we see here, torch.tensor, and we should specify the, the tuple of the array or, so there are a lot of possibilities as you can remain on this. Um, so how we convert, we can convert also uh, a NumPy array from a tensor, so, you will have uh, tensor A, and we can press, you can use the dot numpy to, to convert it from this tensor to a numpy array. Let's print and the type of A score underscore NP, and we can see that also recovering the class uh, numpy in the array, right, for this tensor. And let's print here the values. So it's all the same. It's all the same. Two by three, and two the elements are the same. One dimensional and three elements. And so it should be. Working. So it's all the same. So it works in both directions, from tensor to numpy, from numpy to tensors. So it's all good. And another way to initialize is uh, from numpy. And here we should put as an argument and end the array. So okay. the same result at the bottom. So you might notice that's really easy to use from to convert from a numpy or cast to a to a tensor or what direction vice versa. It's really useful to use both uh, both uh, packages. Now we will see some operations. There are also all the algebraic operations like uh, multiplication, matrix multiplication. They are also available. Divisions, uh, taking the, the 
and use the module from the absolute values they are all available in here let's cover other operations like the in place operation that's really useful operation for uh, in the case of, of bigger tensors let's see how it works torch that once dot three okay let's print it so the value and let's print uh, the ID of A. So in this occasion, it will uh, print the address memory location. So we can see that uh, the tensor A was initialized as a tensor of ones with this shape, and it was allocated in this uh, memory address. Okay. Right. So if we just uh, add this tensor, the one, let's print it again at the A, and also print again the ID of A. Right? So good so far. And we see that was increased this tensor. And now the same tensor is reallocated to another position of memory. As we can see here, so the in place operation, in place, I like name set as is doing the operation in the same place of the memory of the memory, the same place that the variable are allocated. So let's see how it works. Just by taking this operator and just adding the underscore to some uh, some functions we will we will use the in place version of this method right so let's print again the a the value of a and let's also print the id of a so here we see that now is the value is three let's already add it value of one and it was doing was done in the same memory location good you can see a lot of possibilities and, and how most of these uh, these operations are available let's see uh, it's not necessary to let's calculate the cosine of this value right cosine of so it will it will, co it will calculate the cosine of uh, each value of a and it will store again in the same memory location so it will, it will not reallocate to another position of memory we can check by printing the id again and we can see that's all doing in the same memory location and now the, the value of a was changed so we want able to recover the uh, previous values okay all right it's a way to uh, save memory in in the case of we were operating with uh, bigger values like uh, what if we want to apply it? like in the exercise for instance what if we want to operate uh, a tensor uh, with this dimension? We know that eight tensor is 32 bits per flow value. So let's compute the amount of memory. And uh, let's see here. Uh, let's define this vector first. Mm -hmm. uh, Third at once, like. 100 by uh, you can use the underscore in python to make uh, bigger numbers more readable and print a also it's not, it's not necessary to print a it's a really big um, we can just print uh, the shape. Okay. 
and let's see the memory consumption is 81 gigabytes of RAM. Let's increase a little bit more. Let's No, not again, but now it's taking longer time to initialize, and we see that it was increased. Oof. So we are now using for that 50, 4.55 gigabytes of RAM. So just to define a bigger test. Almost let us see that. The total amount of memory, memory for this tensor is, is right the 32 bits for each value. So it's, it's 10,000 by 100. By yeah, it's in bytes. It's bytes. We should divide by by a, right? Right. So oof, there are a lot of bytes. So let's divide a little bit more. Let's see, one million check the amount of uh, megabytes so it's now uh, megabytes. Oof. so for this huge tensor we need four gigabytes of ram so you can see that uh, and the deep learning is you are doing operations like with big number of tensors, with big shapes of tensors. So it's really useful to take into account the in place uh, operations, versions from the different type of values. Let's not to use again this amount of memory. I define just a Zero, and now we can see that we return to dot eighty three gigabytes of memory consumption. That way, let's continue with this class. Let's now talk a little bit more with deep learning, how we operate with tensors, and let's define a neuron, a simple neuron that the is a mathematical operation of linear operation of weighted sums followed by a nonlinearity. So we must define a uh, tensor, the weight tensors like W and the input tensors like X. We have to multiply those tensor and then add the bias, right? Like scalar bias. To the results, we should apply the nonlinearity like the ReLU. Let's just take the positive values of this tensor. Let's go for it. So, um, First, first, yeah, let's first define our torch. Start with the input torch dot once. Define a bigger, a bigger tensor. Hundreds, okay. And let's define the torch dot the weights from a random. Mm, yeah, random. No, random normal part. All right. And the the with this the matrix, this tensor should be the transpose. Okay. Right. And yeah, as we you already know that which this price should be really small. And let's define the Bias like one. Right? We already have these tensors. Let's def uh, define a function for where neuro that should take 
is ten source values, apps, and inputs. Right? And let's define the first operation. Let's define B, right? Like the matrix multiplication, the matrix multiplication. With the input should be yeah matrix product of two tensors and from x and y. Then we add the bias. So this is the linear operator. So we need we have we now have to apply the nonlinearity to this result. And we can apply the clamp operation here and provide the minimum value that should be clamped, no bounds. Let's return this value. Print uh, this forward operation, forward mirror. And the x and y and b. Right, so we already have this zero. Let's increase a little bit more the bias just to get another bias. And right, we have this working. So we have the single puzzle of neuron. So how you can see that's really easy to implement this matrix multiplication. It's really smooth. That uh, it's really fast to uh, the calculation of the moment of calculation of bigger, bigger tensors, the multiplication of bigger tensors, and clamping the values. So we can see that this is the value implementation using torch and of this linear, this this new this linear version. Great, so let's continue a little bit more. And in this exercise, uh, continue with this uh, in place versus normal operation rational. We can, we were requested to change the neuron function, the, the, the function, the function of this form forward neuron and to apply the ReLU in place. How we can do that? Yeah, it's really easy. It's another way here to show that another way to um, to express the matrix multiplication using uh, some method to a tensor, right? So we here we see here that it's applied the matrix multiplication between the x and the y. So in case we can just erase the y value, so we are saving memory by not using another portion of memory to reallocate the y value, and we can just apply uh, directly to be the clamp version by uh, the in place version of this clamp operator operation and uh, by just adding the underscore to at the end of this function. Yeah, we will obtain the same results. So it's all already uh, using here the in place version. And to add some comments about this uh, in place version, if we, uh, in other classes, we will use uh, the PyTorch API, the torch.nn, uh, that in this API is all really defined, all these uh, layers and functions that we will use for deep learning. So in, uh, it's not necessary to define a function and it's already predefined using the torch that neural network and the in place is already set up set it up as a true so it's always using the relu the in place operation of this value so continue with this uh, basic uh, lecture we will see that uh, there are other uh, methods like transposition and beyond, chunking, concatenation, squeezing, and squeezing. A lot of possibilities. Let's start with 
uh, when again a torch that uh, let's see once uh, and find a beer beer tensor and we can print here the a the shape of the a uh, and let's see how it is. the transposition so the transposition we can define uh, a underscore 21 just to make the transpose of this vector this this tensor right and we should apply we should apply the two dimensions that we are transposing let's see we can transpose um, dimension two and to dimension one you should keep in mind that dimension the first dimension or the first dimension is always the dimension zero always like uh, the first position in a tensor is the position zero and so on so we can print now from this new tensor the first one and the first value from the first dimension or well, now the we can check the other by using the two dots uh, we can request the entire value from that dimension and it should be in the, in the last dimension it should be the same as the first element in the second dimension and also in the second position and in the last dimension and is this this is correct so it should be zeros you can see that all the elements from the second the second dimension in this in this case are just as reallocated to this new tensor in the first and let's print here a little bit more the value the shape this new page you can see that it's now it's transpose is different so now all the elements was really great in the first the, the, the in the second position and the first and the first dimension was in the last position so this is really way to swap dimension the tensor is it really useful operation in the learning explore a little bit more by chunking and by using this torch that uh, that chunk operation uh, is a function that will split this first uh, tensor the input tensor in chunks so we can explore a little bit more these arguments. It should be an integer and it should be in agreement of the dimension that we are requesting to chunk this, uh, to split this tensor, right? We are requesting to please split this tensor, to split in dimension zero. Let's see, B. So we can see that dimension the the tensor a was divided by two so it's uh, not, it, not all the element was split but there's better to say split the tensor taking into consideration the dimension a so let's print a little bit more the shape of a and now we can see that the type of b the this, this new tensor that it's gathering around the um, the chunks, a different type, and yeah, this is the original value of the tensor A. This is splits, and it's a tuple. So it's in a tuple, and paint the first element of this tuple and the shape, right? So. I was taking the first dimension, I was split into two. So each element of these chunks are have this dimension, three by four by five. And we can check also that the first 
element. Uh, the first element, yeah. And the first position. First position, yeah, all the first position. Mm, yeah. Let me cover all the first dimension. And comparing to A, in the case, just take the first three elements of this dimension and all the elements of this. Okay. So the first bit should be the same of this part of this tensor. So with all zeros, you can see that these elements are equal. We can recover, we can gather around by using the concatenation. And the concatenation are merging different tensors into a single one. So for merging all these elements, we can uh, we can for this method concatenation okay and touch that cat sorry that catenation cat and it will concatenate sequence so it should be a sequence so it should be it could be this way so we can provide the term touch the split chunks again, like a tuple. Let's make more explicit. And the dimension that we can, we are, we are requesting to concatenate again. And we can print also the concat shape. Right, so we're merging to a single dimension, to a single bed tensor and uh, taking into consideration the dimension so it should be in agreement so we can also provide the end the chunks here or it would, it would work and it works okay you can see that there are several ways to call this method and it's really useful to merge different type of uh, different type of tensors again uh, another way well, Let's see what's, yeah, the concatenation is squeezing and squeezing. You can use uh, it's, um, this method and squeeze first and squeeze, and we can just input the dimension. Let's add the first dimension, right? And in this case, we will add an extra dimension we will span this tensor and we can print the a the original a shape and we can print also the now new tensor there was added another dimension to this tensor right we can add to the last to the last uh, dimension using minus one and now is added another extra dimension to this tensor like here, right? Or in the in between the positions, let's see, like one. There's adding an extra an extra dimension here in the, in the second position, in dimension one, right? Keep in mind that the first dimension is zero, so zero one, right so here, in between the six and four. So there are a lot of ways to operate with this with this method that is really useful in case uh, for deep learning in case of we're talking about the different batch size and we're talking about a lot that we will see here in future classes how it works and we can use also to uh, to squeeze to reduce the um the amount of memory the amount of dimension let's find it to squeeze this new vector. You, you have noticed that there are also available the in place version of this value, this then still function, sorry. So now we should uh, reduce the same 
extra dimension that was added to and, and you know, tensor. And we can see that now A2 has the same dimension that the vector A, the tensor A. But what will happen if we squeeze another? This this squeeze operate operation should only work. It works for dimension equal to one, right? What if we add an extra dimension in the last position and we request it to squeeze this tensor but in another position different uh, dimension one? So it's not working. So it's one squeeze, the other the other the other uh, dimension only works with uh, dimension equal to one. You should keep in mind this. Uh, this trick, right? This, this correct way to squeeze and not to correct a way to squeeze this tensor. Right? All right, let's see again. Oof, no, so far, so good. So, there are a lot of uh, types of operations in tensors with tensors, and I think we are up to here. Uh, I think I hope that you enjoy this uh, this class, this lecture, and we thank you to all the reference. Also, thank to uh, Santiago Pascual that made this really, really, uh, really well um, exercises and provide all the elements really easy. So, thanks for watching. Let's see you again in another class. Bye.